Welcome back to Adventuria, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Adventurer Manager. And I've spent an awful lot of time grinding up my teams, getting a lot of items, training up my blacksmith, and making some truly amazing items such that I feel my A-team can now conquer, or at least survive, and explore the swamp. So the first things first, I'm going to send some teams off on auto adventures, however. We're going to go with a level 10 auto adventure, Tissue. And let's see if team 2 is ready to go with that. Okay, Snooze Fest. I'll let that be. It's either Snooze Fest or somebody dies, so... We're going to send them out, or everybody dies, that is to say. Next, I'm going to do one at level 9. And this time, let's look at group 3. Nope, they're tired. That's Big Biter, Makovar, Saskia, and Drizzt. Group 4. They're tired, though they could handle it if they weren't. Group 5. Dagural, Puggles, Ray Joseph, and Tlaloc. And they're going to go with that. They're level 10, so they should be good. Okay. Oh, we have one more. All right, so let's go with eight, terrorizing. And let's look at six. They're full of energy, snooze fest, they're ready to go. That's soups, good bad adventurer, northern lizard, and miskatonic. All right, so here we go. We're going back to the swamps. And we're going to bring our new team one with the addition of Grumzub. So thank you, Grumzub, for joining the team. Everyone's at level 17, with the exception of Grumzub, who's at 15, but he is catching up. And they're telling me it's going to be a snooze fest. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Let's give it a look. Okay, one thing I want to do, however, see if I can do this from battle. No, it doesn't appear like I can. I wanted to change the sound a little bit to make the sounds not as loud, but the music where it is. But whatever. So let's take a look at our guys, because you can see here a lot has changed. So Elena, first of all, has this gray robe of alacrity, which gives her intelligence and focus. Look at her focus. 126. I believe critical damage should still apply to magical attacks. I hope it does. Because she is an absolute beast. 291 intelligence. Why? Because a level 30 hat that gives her 52 intelligence and 50 focus. This is a cheap necklace. As soon as I can replace it, I will. The ring, dexterity and intelligence, level 24. The ring, constitution, intelligence and focus, level 23. And her staff, intelligence and wisdom and 120 max hit points. So she is packing. Then we have dwarf comic. He has... Custom made, legendary, full plate mail, defense 40, it's item score 32, strength, dexterity, constitution, 55 constitution. He has an onion cap of brilliance, intelligence, and wisdom, that's worthless to him, but that's just what he currently has. He has dexterity and constitution in his amulet. Custom made ring of strength and constitution, 39 and 36, a level 32 item. Another custom made ring of strength, dexterity, and constitution, only level 13 though. And finally, a custom-made scythe. Actually, I don't think so. It's gear score 10. It's probably not custom-made. But strength, constitution, and wisdom. So his constitution's at 200. His strength's at 205. His wisdom lags at 69, but that's okay, because I never use him for wisdom stuff anyway. Grumzub, on the other hand, has benefited from a custom-made waste chain of power. Gear score 25. It has 41 strength, 39 constitution, and 25 intelligence. Chain Helm of Physique, Strength and Constitution, again custom made. Strength, Dexterity and Constitution, custom made amulet. Constitution and Focus with an added benefit of Intelligence, custom made ring. And then, I don't know if this is custom made or not, but it gives him Strength, Intelligence, and Focus. So the funny thing about Grumzub is he has a sick amount of Intelligence for a Barbarian. And who doesn't even need Intelligence? Even his Mallet, his Warhammer of Center, which by the way is custom made is strength, constitution, and focus. And finally, we have Burn Saber. I just built him this. Waste Chain of Instinct. Gear score 28, 
Strength, Constitution, and 49 Wisdom. This I picked up. This is custom made, Constitution and Wisdom with the added bonus of Intelligence. Remember, when you create an item, you can choose two of the attributes, but the third attribute, if it's a purple item, is random. Then we have this ring with Dexterity, Wisdom, and Focus. His unique Skeletal Scepter, which is still pretty decent for being Gear Score 15. And his Spiked Shield of Vitality. So he's got 160 Constitution and 264 Wisdom. So as you can see, I am slowly building up amazing items for my Team 1. So let's see if we can't survive a little longer than we did last time. Here we go. Oh, and by the way, thank you to, I believe it was, Nat20. If it wasn't Nat20, it was Liquidor, but I'm pretty sure in this case it was Nat20, letting me know that you can find out what kind of enemy they are by looking at these symbols, and this is obviously a cleric, and this is a fighter, so you want to take out the cleric enemies first. So I've got my own little strategy here. I Divine Armor first, and then I just heal with Burn Saber. Flame Strike with Elena. Look at that. Amazing. I've customized my guys to have only the bare minimum of abilities. Just the abilities that I'm going to use. Every other point goes into the passive bonuses. I figure, what's the point of having four abilities when you only use two of them, when you could have one ability you use all the time? And we seem to be doing okay. Alright. And while I'm doing this, my auto-adventurers are going to gain items, gold, and experience for us. Oh, two snakes? Give me a break. We'll eat you guys for breakfast. So this is my intention, really, is just to do a lot of grinding off-camera and then bring it to you when I can reasonably fight in the story dungeons so you can see what they all look like in the special enemies and whatnot. Really? A copper common ring? Thanks? Okay. Okay, we'll just keep going this way then. And the large slime, one of the bosses of the area. Looks like the large slime is a fighter. The snake is a rogue, and the killer plant is the cleric. That's either a fighter or a paladin. I can't imagine a large slime being a paladin, though. That doesn't... That doesn't compute. So let's take out the plant. Alright, who needs it more? Grums up. Alright. Let's take out the snake real quick. It's fine. Oh, you missed the snake, Grums Up. Or Dwarf Comic. Come on. Alright, so it's just us versus the large slime now. Let's flame strike him. Oof. Hey, you don't attack Elena. Now, we do kind of wear out after time, and when our energy goes down, we're not quite as effective. But that's okay. Elena is still pretty effective just with a regular attack. And the rest make adequate meat shields, basically. Interesting spear. I'm trying to get as many gems as I can. They're really valuable. So obviously, I need them to feed my item creation beast. Alright, so all we have left here is the giant toad. 
Okay, so I guess we're going to the right. Clustered vines. We haven't seen those before. What should I do? He's a ranger. I'll take him down first. And how? Holy crap. Elena is just unstoppable. And one slime down, one slime to go. You done slimed your last. And so much for that. A Dirk of Power. Okay. Alright, so I can move to the right or the left. I think the right might have a mini boss or something. Ah, the Anaconda, my old friend. We are going to provide quite stronger of a challenge for you this time around, Mr. Anaconda. But first we take out your little buddy. Oh wow, he's still alive. Alright, let's get him. Dwarf Comet took a little beating, but not too bad. All right, and we'll finish with a fireball. Done. So much for the anaconda. And fireball the slime. Done, this is, yeah. So as you can see, grinding takes some time, sure. Generally, in this game, it's a good idea. Now, I'm still not thrilled about it. Like, I wish they had designed the game to be a bit better paced, such that you don't have to grind. But, you know, it's not bad. It's fun, you know? It's not boring or anything, so I enjoy it. All right, let's take a look. All right, to the right, or left, I should say, with us, to the west. We still have a giant toad to see to. Ooh, this might be trouble. Elena got hit pretty hard. We have two healers. I didn't give the clustered vines a chance to attack last time, so I'm not sure what his attack is. Okay, that's not too bad. He somehow fires arrows. Wow, someone hit Elena at some point. Okay, now that, Mr. Clustered Vines, is not acceptable behavior. Oh, great, Burnt Saber. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alright, let's just... Let's let the snake do its business while we heal Elena. Okay. Now goodbye, snake. Oh, yeah. Alright, so let's heal up Dwarf Comic 2. Alright. And done. Grumzub's leveled up. Alright. Let's see here. Honestly, I feel like focus would be good. So you can do more critical damage. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Let's take a look. Maybe it'll explain somewhere here. Bonuses. No. Critical damage, 163%. And crit is a 5.43%. So if we give him... Okay, it goes up 5.46. I get it. Still very low percentage, but I'll take it. 
What do I want to do with you? So I just gave him pressing attack. That's it. I don't really like any of their skills. This increases the damage negate of a target, so it's like a defensive spell. This increases the party's healing received, but bear in mind, he casts this spell, but then the party, someone else needs to heal, which in this case would be Burn Saber, so that's not very useful. This is just like Taunt. This increases his parry, which is good, I guess, but he already has good parry as a passive, so I'd rather spend the points there. Bloodthirst is okay. It lets him regenerate himself, but again, it only lasts for two rounds. Like, all of these skills would be very useful if they lasted for three or four rounds, but two rounds is really not long enough for any of these skills to be useful to me in my strategy. All right, good. And let's keep going. Ah, uh, we don't need to camp just yet, no. Oh, really? You poor suckers don't have a chance. And goodbye, plant. Oh. Well, goodbye next turn. And done. Thumbs up. I'm not happy with the fizzling, though. I'm not quite sure what causes the fizzling. But it is annoying. Elena does it less than Burn Saber. It might be the armor, because I do have him in chain armor, not cloth. Because these guys can wear chain armor. But maybe it doesn't contribute to their fizzliness. Dwarf Comic thinks this area is too damp. I agree. I'm going to gain some free experience. Nice. Okay, we've been here before. Uh, figuratively, not literally. And wow, goodbye clustered vines. I barely knew ya. Okay, Grumzub's taking a few hits. And goodbye snake. The music in the swamp is a little jazzier than you would expect. Oh, Elena from a swamp. It doesn't sound very swampy. It sounds like we're kind of cheerful. Things are happy. I don't really get a swamp vibe from this. Okay. This might be our giant toad friend. No! Mirage's illusion. So that's what Mirage looks like. I dig the beard, dude. He's got kind of the Death Knight armor from... Final Fantasy IV, Cecil, you know, at the beginning before you turn into a paladin, you were wearing that kind of purple getup. Mirage's Illusion. Oh, wow. Um. Whoa. Oh, no, no, not him. Oh, Marcus, what the hell are you doing? All right, Flame Strike the plant. Let's get that out of here quickly. Holy crap. Okay, what's the plan? Heal yourself. Oh, that was worthless. Heal Dwarf Comic. Get rid of the plant. Alright, slimes we've seen before. Oh, but he has they have the deadly qualifier. I wonder what that means. I wonder how tough he is. Well, I'd have to hit him to see... Oh, boy. Wow, we were we were doing so well, and we were so confident. This guy is out of control. All right. Who are we healing here? Elena has the lowest health. Oh, that didn't do nearly as much damage as I would have liked it to. As long as we keep him from doing that crazy spell that hurts everybody, we should be okay, Grumzub. Oh, Elena's out of magic, though. I think we're gonna be okay. But I've said that before. <laughs> Alright, Flame Strike, good. Okay, now I'm a bit more confident. 
and the Illusion of Mirage. Or shouldn't it be the Mirage of Mirage? Mirage squared, perhaps? <laughs> oh, man. All right, Slime. You almost had us there, buddy. But we have survived. As long as we know how to love, I know we'll be all right. And we'll just finish this fellow off and portal out. And then we'll come back in the next episode and get rid of the giant toad. I cannot imagine the giant toad is any stronger than the illusion of Mirage. All right. Well, that almost got really ugly really fast, but the power of the grind leaves us being successful. Let's see here. Dwarf comic. More constitution is always a good thing. Your block chance is at 10%. Let's passively improve your constitution. Grums up. It's not leveled up. Burn Saber. Wisdom. And... So what's cool is that some classes have a bonus to 6% with just the first point. Like in this case, the Cleric class has a passive armor bonus of 6% when you invest one point. And then it grows by 1% afterwards, whereas some things like Wisdom and Constitution only grow by 1% at a time. So you really want to pick that up quickly because it makes a big difference. Like for example, the Mage class has Spell Power up 6%, which is a very good use of one point. Alright, so let's I guess go with... For emergencies, I kind of want to have greater heal. And adding 1% to armor and wisdom isn't going to do anything. He doesn't get hit much, so armor in itself, except for that 6%, is kind of worthless. Wisdom's helpful. Oh, no, I didn't pick up. Oh, no. Oh, quick, pick it up. Well, I picked up one thing anyway. I missed whatever was behind the portal. That was dumb of me. But I have plenty of loot to go through, so... Once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching Adventurer Manager with me. Have a good one.